Welcome back to Cyber Monday. I'm Tia James, here to kick off another episode where we break down the latest and greatest in tech. Today, we've got everything from mind-blowing VR applications to sustainable tech solutions that are helping save the planet. Plus, a technical segment that'll have you laughing out loud. Let's get into it. Virtual reality is most often associated with gaming, but it's so much more than that now. In Tech Review today, we're exploring how VR is changing industries like healthcare, education, and even real estate. First up is Oso VR, a platform used to train surgeons. Oso VR uses detailed simulations to allow medical professionals to practice surgeries, creating a risk-free environment that builds skills without impacting patient safety. Next, there's Engage VR, which offers virtual classrooms where students can experience interactive lessons on anything from ancient history to science experiments in a virtual lab. And finally, Matterport is transforming real estate tours, letting buyers and renters explore properties from anywhere in the world through virtual walkthroughs. Let's take a look. It's a long road to become a surgeon and there's too much to learn. So you're being spread too thin. It takes about 50 to 100 procedures to achieve basic proficiency. You're relying on random chance to get exposure to those surgeries. With virtual reality, you go from having one tibia to infinite tibias, right? You can get those reps in. You can use it anytime, anywhere. You can train on any procedure. You can train as a team and train remotely. With Oso VR, our mission is to improve patient outcomes and make providers' lives better. It's not replacing real-world experience, but it's enough to get you much further along the learning curve so that when you walk into the operating room, you feel very confident and you know exactly what to do. The Oculus team is so excited and supportive of the work we're trying to do in the world, I can feel it, and it is highly motivating. You can create technology that can impact the lives of billions of patients all around the world. Virtual reality and the Oculus Quest is one of those technologies. VR Engage is a multi-role virtual simulator Developed for use in training simulations or laboratory experimentation, VR Engage lets users play first-person human character roles, including a driver, gunner, or commander of a ground vehicle, or the pilot of a fixed-wing aircraft or helicopter. Built on mature, proven technologies, VR Engage gets its simulation engine from VR Forces, its game-quality 3D graphics from VR Vantage, and its network interoperability from VR Link. VR Engage simulates high fidelity vehicle motion and dynamics with a real time physics engine, which brings to life friendly, hostile, and neutral ground, rotary, and fixed wing vehicles and the full library of DI Guy characters. Improve the realism of air to air, air to ground, on the ground, and person to person engagements with voice communications, sensors, weapons, and countermeasures. Interact with the environment from opening and closing doors to destroying bridges and buildings. Like VR Vantage and VR Forces, Mox Terrain Agility allows you to take advantage of the terrain you have or to try innovative streaming and procedural terrain techniques. VR Engage is ready to use out of the box and can be deployed as a training simulator, as a role player station, an instructor aid, a desktop simulation game, or even as a VR headset experience. Mach focuses on the needs of system integrators, so we designed VR Engage to be as flexible as possible. VR Engage can be customized and extended to meet program specific requirements and integrate into a diverse range of system configurations. Pricing and support models are designed specifically to help system integrators win bids and deliver projects. Natively compliant with this and HLA, VR Engage can be used in multiplayer classroom environments and can interoperate with existing simulation applications and third party computer generated forces. When VR Engage is used in conjunction with VR Forces and other mock products, 
users unleash additional benefits of common system architecture. The VR Forces graphical user interface can serve as a common instructor interface to lay down and manage both the player controlled entities and computer generated forces entities. Users can build terrains, models, and configurations once and deploy them across VR engaged player stations, the VR Forces CGF, and any other applications that use VR Vantage IG. Role play multiple entities at a time by switching between manual and CGF control on the fly or act as a gunner or other crew member of a VR forces driven entity. Also, users will gain a common representation of the environment across player and CGF stations, including synchronized weather, time of day, and dynamic terrain. Get in the game with VR Engage. Meet Matterport, the market-leading 3D platform that lets anyone turn a physical space into an immersive digital twin. Homes, offices, factories, shops, museums, schools, you name it. Scans are captured from any compatible camera, including the phone in your pocket. This recent innovation is only possible because of Matterport's huge data library. And behind it all is Cortex, our powerful AI and deep learning neural network that automatically stitches together images to construct dimensionally accurate 3D models. Once a digital twin is created, it can be customized with matter tags, labels, and guided tours, and easily shared with anyone on any device. They can virtually view, collaborate, and engage with 3D spaces. Thousands of companies in over 150 countries use Matterport and have realized unparalleled value. Millions of spaces of every kind have been captured, comprising billions of square feet and 3D data points, resulting in the largest spatial data library in the world. And it gets bigger every day, allowing customers across the property lifecycle to unlock unprecedented spatial data insights and analytics. Matterport has been digitizing the built world for a decade. Now, we're massively scaling towards achieving our mission of making every building and every space more valuable and accessible. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Quantum computing is a topic that's starting to capture attention, and for good reason. In Bytes of Brilliance today, we'll be breaking down what quantum computing is and why it's considered a game changer in tech. Quantum computers use quantum bits, or qubits, which allow them to perform complex calculations far faster than traditional computers. Tech giants like IBM and Google are making strides in developing quantum technology that could revolutionize industries from drug discovery in healthcare to improving logistics and solving massive data problems in real time. Let's dive into a short explanation of how this technology works and why it's so groundbreaking. Even though we experience the benefits of classical computing every day, there are problems above a certain size and complexity that would take a traditional computer an impractical amount of time to solve. Enter quantum computing. All computers rely on a fundamental ability to store and manipulate information. Current computers manipulate individual bits, which store information as binary, zero, and one states. For example, when our human eyes see the letter A, our computer sees a specific string of zeros and ones. From social media to spreadsheets, everything is done through these sequences of zeros and ones. Where current computers use bits, quantum computers use qubits. The bits in our current computers can only be either one or zero, but not both. 
but qubits can represent a one and a zero at the same time. So if computers were coins, current models would be a coin flip, with either heads or tails as the only outcomes. But quantum computing would be like spinning the coin. The computer doesn't have to choose one or the other. This allows quantum computers to look at many different variables simultaneously. The good news is that quantum computers would be thousands of times faster than our current computers, possibly reducing the time to solve a complex problem from hundreds of thousands of years to mere seconds. The bad news? Quantum computers are very fragile and need to be perfectly isolated from heat and vibration. One quantum computer is kept cool at 0.015 Kelvin, or about 180 times colder than interstellar space. Although quantum computers promise to power exciting advances such as better batteries or new disease-curing medicines, conventional computers will still be the easiest and most economical solution for tackling most problems. So a quantum computer, it's a fundamentally new type of computer that could help us solve certain types of problems significantly faster. There are problems that could take billions of years to solve on our classical computers, that is our normal computers, like your laptop or your phone. But on a quantum computer, you could just solve these problems in just seconds. A normal computer uh, works by uh, bits. So I like to use this donut to illustrate a bit. You can imagine that the bit one is equivalent to this frosted side of the donut, and the bit zero is equivalent to this plain side of the donut. Well, in quantum computers, instead of using uh, classical bits, we use quantum bits. So a quantum bit, it can be one and it can be zero but it can also be something called a superposition of zero and one. And I like to think of it like a spinning donut. Right now, if I ask you, is it zero or one? You'd say, well, it's sort of both. It's a combination of zero and one. And then this superposition allows you to solve some problems faster on the quantum computer. So a quantum computer could impact a lot of industries, including the financial industry, including medicine, materials, logistics, space, um, the possibilities are quite endless. There's actually multiple ways to build a quantum computer. There isn't one way to do it. And that means that there's actually multiple ways that it can look like. So for example, one way to build a quantum computer is by using diamonds. Another way to build a quantum computer is using photons, which is basically light. Another way to build a quantum computer is by using something called trapped ions. So it's basically atoms with uh, a net electric charge and they can find it in a particular space and they can manipulate that. Another way to build a quantum computer is by using superconductors. And this is actually one of the most popular ways to build a quantum computer. For example, Google and IBM are working on this. And if you've ever seen a picture of it, you'll see that there is a quantum chip. It's very small, but around it is this whole infrastructure. In fact, it looks like a chandelier. And all of this infrastructure is in order to cool down the quantum chip, but also to control and manipulate the quantum chip. One of the reasons why quantum computing became popular is because a quantum algorithm was found that could basically break a lot of the encryption methods that are used on the internet. So this is actually what keeps your credit card information secure, your bank information secure on the internet. But a quantum computer, if it were powerful enough, if we could build one that's powerful enough, it could actually break that. And that is a big concern for people, including governments. Welcome to Namibia, where adventure meets tranquility. With Enjoy, you have access to a wide range of accommodations to suit every traveler's taste and budget. Experience the finest dining and hospitality Namibia has to offer. Booking your dream accommodation is just a few clicks away with Enjoy. Join thousands of happy travelers who have trusted Enjoy for their Namibian getaway. Your gateway to unforgettable Namibian adventures. Visit us today at enjoy.my.na.
In Code Red today, we're diving into the world of AI-generated deepfakes on social media. These are hyper-realistic images or videos of people that look convincing but are completely fake, created by AI algorithms. Deepfakes can be used for creative purposes, but they also pose risks, from spreading misinformation to compromising people's privacy. Social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter are starting to detect and label deepfake content, but it's an ongoing challenge. Here are some ways to spot deepfakes and what social media platforms are doing to address them. No one's lips died away. This we need to adapt to the fact that we can't trust anything we see. I don't know about you, but to me, some deepfake videos seem 100% real. At least not in a public address. I guess I could easily be tricked by a fake video. I'm a journalist, so telling the truth is a crucial part of my job. I need to know what's real and what's fake. So I want to find out, is there a way to distinguish between a real... This is real life. ...and a fake video? This is really happening. And how can we detect deep fakes? That's how Lee. He's an associate professor of computer science. He has created some nearly perfect deep fakes of politicians. To check out how he makes deep fakes, make sure to click on the link. Very soon, they will become so hard to detect that you have to take a different approach. One of the most disturbing problems right now, if you do things like revenge porn, right? So if you insert someone's face into pornography, that's something that was hardly possible before. Now, the problem with videos is that, you know, as opposed to just images, is that videos are really something that was always used to convince people of you know, this is what really happened. How Lee and his team want to get better at unmasking fake videos. While How Lee creates perfectly manipulated videos, others try to detect them. Like Hani Farid, one of the world's best digital forensics experts. He would send us fakes. We would analyze them and say, we can detect them. And then he would try to make them better and better and better. And that's what you want because you don't want the person detecting the fake to create it. You want somebody who's very good at creating fakes, who's trying to fool you to, to create that data, because that means we're gonna push our algorithms for detection much, much further. Farid's team analyzed videos of politicians to study their facial characteristics. Unlike deep fakes, their method is not based on artificial intelligence. We try to understand how do people move, how does the mouth move, how does the expressions change, in part because we think that those are properties of the video that the machine learning can't currently analyze, and that means we're less vulnerable to counterattack. So anytime you build forensic techniques, you always have to ask yourself, how will this be um, used to make better fakes? The different lines and dots visualize aspects like the movement of the head, different expressions and the direction of the eyes. Farid compares the real and the fake video to unmask anomalies in the deepfake. The method detects up to 96% of manipulated videos. But what if there is a perfectly manipulated video of you or me on the internet? How would people know that it's fake? One idea for the future is to include detection tools in the social network's algorithms. Tech giants like Facebook and Microsoft have released data sets for researchers to work with. But for now, we need to look at the weak spots. Because the deep fakes are being made frame after frame after frame after frame, sometimes there's little slips between the frame, like the face jiggles a little bit. If you watch the video at full speed, you may not see it. But if you slow it down frame to frame to frame, sometimes you see these little glitches. The pitiful impressionist. Doom delivered. But no sometimes you just don't. Deepfakes are getting better now. and better. Yes, this is real life. This is really happening. How Lee thinks it's only a matter of time for the perfect deepfake to arrive, making detection even harder. What people need to do is, for example, trust where the source comes from. Use common sense to even see if this is something that is even plausible to you. Maybe that's one of the, the at least the most positive things about you know, the spread of disinformation because it forces us to think. Detecting deepfakes is a tough task. Are you worried that you won't be able to tell a real video from a fake one? How do you feel about it? Or do you think it's not going to be that bad? Let us know in the comments. And thanks for watching. 
We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Is anything more sad and lame, contemptible, beneath disdain? In short. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Now, in Wired for Change, let's talk about tech that's helping us live more sustainably. As the impact of climate change grows, people are looking for ways to reduce their carbon footprint, and tech companies are stepping up to help. First, we have Echoism, a smart home energy monitor that helps track electricity usage, pinpointing which appliances are using the most energy and providing tips to reduce consumption. Next, there's Lollyware, a company creating biodegradable, edible straws made from seaweed, offering a great alternative to single-use plastic. And finally, the Tesla Solar Roof, which combines solar panels with roof shingles to generate clean energy. Let's check out these innovations in action. Imagine a truly energy-efficient home. Not deficient, but efficient, as an effective, family-friendly, functional, neat, and terrific. Your fridge, have you ever left it open? Eco is me will help you keep your things cool with timely notifications sent directly to your phone. Now I know that my AC is energy efficient, but my coffee maker uses too much power. I even get suggestions on how to save money on my electricity bill. Honey, I gotta run. Beauty requires sacrifice. Eco is me doesn't. Saving energy is all about receiving those notifications. It can be life-saving as well. And now I even know when my sons come home. Hey there, Max! Huh, I'm using less energy than my mother Dorothy. Oops, I need to turn off the AC in the bedroom. the world's first edible drinking cup as an alternative to plastic and since then we've replaced over 136,000 plastic cups who's ready to try the cup of the future gotta try it gotta okay try it. done yeah done. mark can i get in on that who's coming in i'm in yeah, I'm I'm like, we have become experts in edible hypercompostable materials and we've now developed what is the next generation of lollyware and we're super excited to share today what's next in Lollyware's innovation pipeline. Introducing Lolly Straw, the world's first edible, hypercompostable drinking straw. Lolly Straw is made from the next generation of our edible, patent pending material technology, Lolly Zero. It's made from seaweed and it's 100% marine degradable, hypercompostable, non toxic, and non GMO, and can even be embedded with super fun flavors and nutritional benefit. Let us share with you why it's so critical to replace something so small. 500 million plastic straws are discarded every day in the US. 
which is just a fraction of the billions used globally. Plastic straws cannot be captured by the plastic recycling stream because they are too small. So in the best case scenario, they are piling up in landfills, and too often, they are contributing to the 8 million tons of plastic bound for our oceans each year. At the current rate of pollution, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. Plastic straws are clogging our landfills and killing our precious sea life. Where plastic straws are simply taking up more and more space in our landfills, lolly straw creates new value after it's used in three key ways. By transforming into plant fuel through composting, machine fuel through anaerobic digestion, or human fuel through eating. Now more than ever before, we need a solution. The world needs lolly straw, because lolly straw is the straw of the future. That's it for this episode of Cyber Monday. We covered everything from VR applications to deepfake safety tips and even a few eco-friendly innovations. Thank you for joining me and remember to follow us on social media for more updates and behind-the-scenes content. Until next time, I'm Tia James, reminding you to stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring the world of tech. See you next week.